Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today and welcome to the UK Higher Biomedical Live webinar. We, we appreciate your time coming live to us from our offices here in London. My name is Peter Peterson. I'm International Marketing Director at Higher Biomedical, usually based in Qingdao, but at the moment, obviously, with epidemic, I'm in London until I can travel back to China. We thank you again for fitting us into your busy schedule today for the webinar. And I'm also the facilitator. So every now and then I might be a little gap as I, I'm admitting more, more people in. Uh, but a bit of housekeeping, as I mentioned, if you don't mind keeping your phones on mute, your, your computers, and uh, please compu yeah, mute all mics. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Uh, also, uh, we're going to do a quick, over I'm just going to give you a quick overview of proceedings. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, we filmed a video uh, with some filming with, with uh, Richard Jafato, our general manager from the UK, and Harry Pomfret, one of our senior sales guys, to, to sort of expedite today. So they're going to give us, from our warehouse, they're going to talk about four products. Um, those four products are the Salvum J series, the Ultra Low Energy BP freezer, the Twinkle freezer, and then the Underbench ULT freezer. So we're going to do a quick video now. Um, please, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see opportunity there to, to be able to send your questions. And what we're going to do, this is a little bit different today. We're going to take questions in, in gaps as we move along. Uh, Richard and Harry will take your questions, but we need you to type those through in advance. And then after we do the videos, and then after that, we'll do, we'll do the questions. So without further ado, again, thank you. Um, remember to type your questions in down, down the bottom. We'll try and get to everybody's questions. We may not, but we'll give you some more details as we move through and at the end so that you can contact us at a later date and we can get back to you by email or on social media. So I'm gonna now move forward to our, our first uh, video with Richard and Harry, and then we're we'll back to you in a few minutes time. So thank you again and praying that technology will go all okay. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Richard Gifrato and I am the General Manager for Higher Biomedical UK. I've been working with the Higher Biomedical brand since 2008 when I was a distributor for the products within the UK market. Over the years I've been very fortunate to work with the team in China And I've also seen the expansion of the company. Today, we're going to be showing you some of our minus 80 range and my colleague, Harry, will be taking you through some of the products within our portfolio. If you have any questions on the products, please feel free to ask and we will do our best to answer them throughout this webinar. This is our J series, Salvum, low energy range, of ULT freezers. The J series is our most popular range, as well as the range with the largest variety of sizes. From 100 litres under bench and chest to 828 litres with a 60,000 cryovial capacity. From 578 to 828 litres, the J series has independent verification from Energy Star. The compressor system is a high efficiency cascade system and the refrigerant is hydrocarbon. This allows for low noise and even lower energy figures. Our J series features a powder coated stainless steel chassis with VIP and foam insulation. This reduces energy consumption while increasing holdover time during a power failure. The handle is ergonomic and robust with each unit having a key coded to the freezer. There is an option for a padlock if desired. At the bottom of the unit, we have the filter grill. This grill is easily accessible for service and replacement of the filter. Each of our ULT freezers features a stainless steel powder coated exterior door. There are four layers of gaskets between the exterior and the interior of the unit. The pressure equalization port is heated. This prevents ice buildup, which can lead to blockages. The port will also automatically equalize the pressure when the user accesses or closes the freezer. This allows for quick access to samples. Inside the unit, there are four compartments. Each compartment features a unique 
in a door with gasket seal. The door has a duckbill handle design which allows for a firm seal. This prevents cold air loss during accessing the samples. Inside the freezer, there are three main stainless steel shelves. Each shelf is adjustable and can be moved up or down to user requirements. At the rear of the unit, there are two access ports. These access ports can be used for wireless monitoring or CO2 backup. This is the LED controller for the J series. It has a readout for the internal temperature, the ambient temperature, and the incoming voltage provided by the supply. This information is stored every six minutes for 10 years and can be accessed via a USB port on the bottom of the controller. This will give a .csv file for traceability and maintenance. There is a full suite of alarms, both visual and audible, for the high and low temperature inside, high and low ambient, power failure, hot condenser, low battery. The settings for the internal temperature and high and low alarms are password protected on the main control board. Instructions for adjusting this are available in an easy format on the front of the unit. This is our new flagship BP Ultra Low Energy Freezer. By using frequency conversion technology, we have reduced the noise output to 43.5 decibels and increased the energy efficiency of the unit. The BP series is available from 579 litres up to 959 litres with a 70,000 cryovial capacity. As you can see, there are many similarities between the J and the BP series. Some of the main differences, except cosmetics, is the option for a touchscreen controller, optional electronic lock with NFC keycard and fingerprint options for unlocking the freezer. The BP series also utilizes inverter compressors. The speed of these compressors is controlled by the main board. This allows for an 8.2 kilowatt hour per day figure for an 829 liter unit, 43.5 decibel noise levels, and an internal uniformity of plus or minus three degrees. This is our S series twin compressor twinkle range of ULT freezers. The primary difference between an S series and a BP or J is that there are two independent refrigeration systems within the S series. If one were to fail, the other one can run the unit at minus 80 with continual use. This is our new 100J Underbench Minus 80 Freezer, the newest addition to our J series. It provides a compact and versatile Minus 80 storage solution where space is premium. It features an easy to use LED interface with a USB port as standard, a unique key locking main door handle, and on the side, an access port for running wireless monitoring into the unit. The units can be stacked using a secure stacking system if required. Thank you, Pete, for the uh, introduction there and welcome everybody wherever you are in the world. Uh, so morning, afternoon, evening, I uh, hope that covers everything. Um, what we're going to do now is just show some brief videos on the individual series of freezers that we've just shown you there in the main video. So we've got some marketing videos that go around the J series, the BP and the twin call. So we'll run through those. And if anyone does have any specific questions on uh, the actual range that we're going to show you now, then please do ask them, type them in and we will go through those. If not, then Harry and I will run through some of the main questions that we get asked by customers and distributors on a regular basis. So Pete, if you want to run the next video, that'd be great. Selvum Series Energy Saving Minus 86 Degrees Celsius ULT Freezer Natural Hydrocarbon Refrigeration System The global leaders in HC refrigeration systems saves energy by more than 30%. Advanced Insulation Design 
includes a double foam combination with an inside and outside five layer seal gasket design. Using the super thick vacuum insulation panel, heat preservation insulation increases efficiency by 20%, the whole machine achieving energy savings of 50%. Low noise. Super silent and energy saving fan combined with special noise reduction cabinet design, lowering the noise level to 50 dBA. Slim cabinet design. All models can pass through a narrow doorway up to 90 centimeters. Filter. Located at the front of the engine compartment, the filter can be removed without tools, allowing for cleaning and easy maintenance. Shelf. Made of stainless steel with intelligent inside space design, ensuring superior temperature uniformity within the cabinet. Exterior door handle. Ergonomic handle design ensures effortless door opening and closing. USB port enables the user to download in real-time temperature data. Optional port. The freezer connected with the computer enables users to monitor in real-time the temperature and adjust as needed the temperature via the computer software. Remote alarm port. Designed for remote monitoring. Malfunction alarms. High and low temperature alarm, sensor fault alarm, hot condenser alarm, power failure alarm, door ajar alarm, low battery alarm, and high ambient temperature alarms are included. Adjustable legs. Four casters with two manually adjustable stabilizers for leveling, which ensures the unit is easy to move and lock. Chart recorder. This will independently record and monitor the temperature data. Liquid nitrogen and CO2 backup kit. Optional liquid nitrogen and CO2 backup kit for safety storage of samples. Certification. All products are UL and Energy Star certified and conform to the US national grade rebate. Thanks, Pete. Um, so, yeah, that was just a quick video to go through the J series. Uh, I can see one question's come through with regards to the internal doors on the freezers. And Stephen has asked um, whether the uh, or how easy it is to remove the internal doors. Harry, would you like to answer that? So, all the internal doors in the J series, and, and there's four internal doors, one for each compartment, they sit on a, a swivel pin. So. If you need to remove the doors for defrosting or you need to remove the doors for maintenance, then the door can be lifted off very easily of, um, and then it can just be placed back on once you're finished with it. Thank you, Harry. Um, so we'll just run through a few questions that we get on a regular basis about the J series. Um, Harry, I'll just pose some questions to you if you'd like to go through these. Um, the temperature uniformity of the J-Series, that's something that we get asked quite a bit. Can you just go through that quickly? Sure. So um, on our underbench model, which is our new 100J, we have a temp temperature uniformity of plus or minus four degrees. Um, it's sort of mainly geared towards obviously clinical and uh, containment. So having a really good uniformity there was important. Um, for the larger units, you're looking at a um, plus or minus six degrees of, of uniformity. And we do this using the, uh, obviously the VIP and foam insulation as the inner doors, as well as the high efficiency cascade system. Thank you. And you would have seen in the video there that the uh, J-Series comes with a USB port to enable the user to download data. Um, and that will give you temperature recordings of the freezer. How much data can you download, Harry? So previously it was up to 10 years of data, but I believe with the newer generation, we're looking at 15 years worth of storage every six minutes of the um, internal temperature, um, the ambient temperature and the incoming voltage. It's really, really useful, uh, especially from a maintenance standpoint and also as a backup data logger for your samples inside. Okay, another question has just come through with regards to the CO2 backup system that was actually shown in the video as well. 
Um, and uh, Stephen's asking again, can it be retrofitted uh, or does it need to be ordered with the freezer at point of order? Um, so we will always recommend installing the CO2 backup at the point of delivery. Um, obviously, when the unit's at ambient, it's much easier to install the system. However, it's not, uh, it's not necessary. If you feel like down the line, either your usage has changed to the freezer or you would like a CO2 backup because the sample value is growing in the freezer, then we can actually install those systems afterwards, you know, years into the future. Um, it just makes it a bit more difficult. But our engineers are more than capable of doing it. Thank you. Um, some other questions that we often get asked, and I, I, you know, this is very pertinent to the UK. We're delivering freezers into uh, hospitals and universities that are hundreds of years old and not designed to take massive bits of kit. So the height and size of the freezers is quite important to be able to get them through doorways. Um, what's the standard height of an upright minus 80 freezer, Harry? So the standard height of our freezers is around um, 1,980 mil or 198 centimetres. And the, we have some exceptions, obviously. The 338J uh, um, is a smaller unit. It's designed to fit into very small spaces. And the 578J is also a bit shorter. And obviously, as the London rep, I can appreciate having to put large bits of equipment into buildings that were never meant to take equipment that large. But um, we can also do a lot of things to remove the main door, the handle, and we work closely with our logistics teams to really come up with some very interesting solutions to difficult problems with delivery. Thanks, Harry. Um, and it's also worth pointing out the extent of the range within the J series. There's, there's actually nine models of freezers within the range. Uh, going from 100 litre underbench and chest all the way up to 828 litre. Um, all of those products can be found on our website, but it's important for us to have a freezer that fits the individual customer's needs. And we don't just focus on the popular models, which tend to be 570, 720. Uh, we really have a model for anyone out there. Okay, I think that's sort of covered the J series for now. So we'll move on to the uh, BP series. So Pete, if you want to run the video on that, that'd be great. Thank you, Pete. Um, okay, so that was just a, a brief video on the uh, BP series there. So again, some of the um, most common questions that we get through from customers and distributors are, um, what's the differences in, in energy figures from the BP to, to J series, Harry? So with the BP and J series, obviously the most high efficiency cascade systems, um, However, because we're using inverted compressors and dynamic cooling of the compressor deck, 
uh, we can really bring down the energy figures. So if we're looking at the 828J, which is our largest, most um, an efficient model in the J series, it has a kilowatt consumption of 11.5 kilowatt hours a day. Now, if you look at the comparative model, which is the 829BP, um, as the control board on, on, on side can measure the load, user usage, internal, external environment, we've brought that from 11.5 kilowatt hours a day to 8.2 kilowatt hours a day. Now, it has a huge impact on the ongoing running costs, obviously, but with, because the control board can control the compressors very precisely, so it's not turning them on and off, it's just stepping them up and stepping them down. Um, we also get the uniformity from six uh, to plus or minus six all the way down to plus or minus three. Um, and another question that is often posed is um, the warranty on our freezers. What, um, what warranty do they come with? So um, as with all of our cold chain storage, and that's from underbent, tiny underbench water fridges all the way up to our largest minus 80s, you always get a five year warranty. Um, that's parts, labor, everything. I think our warranty is as long as you didn't push it down up a flight of stairs, we normally cover it. I'd like to just stress that that's obviously a warranty that we offer in the UK. It would be different um, for the rest of Europe and, and the rest of the world. Um, what sizes are available in the uh, BP range, Harry? So currently we have um, 579 litres, 729 litres, 829 and 959 litres, which is 70,000 samples. Um, as our capacities. This will grow um, and as with all products in the UK we really you know if people want other sizes in this in this uh, technology then we will accommodate that you know a lot of our development is really driven by what people in the industry actually want. Thanks Harry. Another question has just come through. Um, do the freezers have remote alarm contacts? So on the right hand side of the freezer where the control panel is um, with the ba uh, battery and main power switch, there is a series of volt free and non-contact um, remote alarm contacts for you know, BMS systems, emergency contact systems. If that's how your system connects, then there is ports for that. Um, there are also ports on the back. It's usually two for, free, for each freezer with the exception of the 100J. Um, what will happen is you can run wireless monitoring and CO2 backup through those ports if you have a wireless system in place. Thanks. And I think it would also be good to just go over some of the features that differ on the BP, you know, things like um, the handle, NFC, fingerprint, things like that. So, yeah, um, there, there are a few changes which aren't just cosmetic. You can obviously, there's a difference cosmetically between the J and the BP. But um, when you get the base model, it will come with an LED controller for the BP, but you can also upgrade to a touchscreen. Um, and other upgrades we have is electronic lock for the door. Um, you can use NFC cards and it's pretty much any, any NFC cards. So you have like a, an institute card or a university card or a company card that's used to access doorways. Um, you can register it with, under your name on, on the freezer and it will register every time you open and close. And once you've done that, you can actually export the configuration to other freezers you own that are from Higher Biomedical and it makes setting them up easy. Again, uh, there's also the fingerprint scanner. And I believe there was talk also of an iris scanner um, for those who want to live in a bond film. Um, but the other difference is obviously uh, the compressor system. It's all controlled by the control board. Instead of going on and off, it will speed up and speed down using our frequency conversion technology. The fans, we actually use fan arrays now in the cooling of our compressor decks. Instead of two big, expensive and uh, energy costly fans, we have an array of fans which are stepped up and stepped down and turned on and turned off as required. And that's really why we have almost five, um, five kilowatt hours a day difference between an 828J and an 829BP. Thank you, Harry. I think that's kind of covered um, the BP series for now. So what we'll do now is move on to the uh, twin call range of freezers that we have, which do offer a very different uh, technology in refrigeration. So worth having a look at this quick video and then, you know, having a, a bit more of a discussion afterwards. So Pete, if you want to run that video, that'd be great.
Thank you, Pete. Um, so yeah, as you can see, slightly different technology with the uh, twin core freezer. Um, a few more questions coming through. Thank you, Ian. Um, Harry, so do the freezers have access ports for uh, temperature monitoring probes? Yeah, um, all of our minus 80 ranges, uh, as well as our fridges and freezers and from plus four to minus 40, they all come um, with access ports as standard. Now, um, the majority of minus 80s from 388 plus will have two. This is in case you wanted to run a CO2 backup at the same time. Um, the port ensures that you can run the wireless monitoring through. Uh, it's easier to do when the freezer is off and initially. However, it can be done fairly simply after the freezer has been turned on. Just recommend the use of cryo gloves to do so or contact your local rep. Um, so yeah, all of, our, all of our refrigeration systems have uh, access ports for wireless monitoring. Um, another question has come through uh, is actually very pertinent to, to the twin call is um, what temperature will the twin call freezer run at if one compressor fails? So um, while technology for twin compressors is quite is, is newer to the market and some um, some other manufacturers will say a minus 70 range which can be anywhere from minus 65 up to minus 75. Uh, our compressor systems have been rated and tested to run at minus 80 for I think our testing period was 210 days but we tested at um, 38 degrees Celsius and 90% relative humidity. So we really stress tested it. Tested it. Um, while it's running at minus 80, obviously you can continue to use the freezer as well. So it doesn't hinder you and your ability to continue your work or, uh, and it gives you a, a, the better part of a year in our testing to um, find a freezer to decant into. Uh, thank you for your question, Roger. Um, how many users can use the fingerprint feature on one freezer? Not sure if you're going to know that, Harry, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Top of my head. I know you can, I, we have yet to see a limit on how many people you can register on a fingerprint and your NFC card. Um, the great thing is, uh, and we won't discuss it in this webinar, but with the IoT coming up, we will be able to keep this all online as well. So it's easy to export and, um, to other freezers or via USB. But I will definitely look into that for you. And if you provide your email address at the end, then I can, um, I can reply to you by email. Uh, another quick question that's come through is, um, do you sell freezer racking? Yes, so um, we, we, we do sell freezer racking as well. Um, in, we do it mainly in the standard designs originally. So we have the drawer style and side loading racking available. We also offer bin racks, which are essentially empty bins in a rack sizes. Which is very good for putting loose samples or bags or, or things that don't conventionally fit in a, in a standard rack. Um, we also do custom racking. Um, now we can do custom racking for various vials, various boxes. Um, we can even have the racks color coded for you. It, it depends on what helps your workflow really. Um, but we do have great lead times of racking deliveries as well. And from the majority of our freezers, with the exception of the 100J, the 33A and the 490, all the racking will be cross compatible, even between the J, the BP and the S range. Excellent. Thanks, Harry. Um, so a couple of other questions just uh, on the twin call itself uh, because of the different technology used with the compressors what effect does that have on on energy consumption so um compared to a standard cascade system it's not quite as energy efficient but the main reason for this is instead of having a single compressor system in place you have two working in parallel now they will only work in parallel to pull down to temperature. Once they're at temperature, they'll begin to swap between each other. This massively reduces the energy costs, but also wears the compressors evenly. So for its class, it is incredibly energy efficient. It works at 12 kilowatt hours a day. And in the event of a compressor failure, you have a completely redundant system in place. We also use hydrocarbon refrigerant, which makes it very quiet and also makes it more energy efficient as well as reducing carbon footprint. Now, um, <clears throat> we also have the dynamic cooling in, in place on the, like the BP with the array of fans and the compressor deck, and this helps also keep it quite energy efficient. Uh, thanks, Harry. One more question on the uh, twin call, which I think is again very pertinent, and we have had uh, clients buy the product specifically for this reason, is pull down times and recovery times. Um, you know, what sort of pull down time does the 578S uh, give you? So if you look at, let's say with the 578S, as you said, um, the 578 uh, equivalent in the market cascade, even our own model, you're looking at a five to six hour pull down time. 
Now, with the 578S, it can engage both compressor systems at the same time. So you're looking at a three hour pull down time. Now, not only does this mean that it can go down from, and that's from 25 degrees Celsius down to minus 80 in three hours. If you use it as a decant freezer and you're putting warm samples in there or samples that have warmed up slightly, in our own testing, the freezer will barely blink as you put these samples in because it has so much power available to it. Once it's at temperature, obviously it'll swap over to a single compressor, but if that one drops out, it will then switch back again. That's great, thanks Harry. Um, okay, so the last freezer we showed in the original video at the start of the webinar was the new underbench 100 litre minus 80 freezer. Um, we're very excited about this product. It's something that we have um, been asking for for a little while now. And we think the development team in Qingdao in China have done an excellent job with the product and given us a, a market leading product. Um, unfortunately, because it's very new, we don't have a video on that product yet. We do have stock in the UK and they are selling very quickly. Um, so we're going to run through a quick PowerPoint on that particular product and then just go into some, uh, some more specific points after that. So if you'd just like to bring that up, Pete, that'd be great. Thanks, Richard. Um, and I promise this is the only PowerPoint presentation of the webinar, and I will keep it very, very brief. So I want to quickly answer a question I get a lot, which is what do our model numbers actually mean? Um, just a quick overview of that. So DW refers to a freezer. If you see that, it's a freezer. The next number, the minus 86 in this case, is the coldest temperature it can operate at. So minus 86 for ULTs. We do have some minus 20s that can go down to minus 40. So it'll be DW minus 40. The L refers to an upright freezer. A W would be a chest freezer. And the 100 is the literage, in, the literage capacity. And the letter at the end, in this case, J, just refers to what range of freezer it belongs to. So the BP would be the frequency conversion and the S would be the twin compressor. So obviously, as Richard mentioned, we did launch in February 2020. We've recently um, taken stock of the unit and it's proved to be very popular. Um, due to its compact size for clinical trials where they only need a unit for processing um, in the lab or even in containment labs where you only need a very small footprint just to keep samples in and cold um, in between processing. It's a fantastic solution. Um, you know, Long-term storage in labs is very small, uh, even in the healthcare, a lot of the hospitals weren't designed for large minus 80 so a small minus 80 really gives a great option for a minus 80 solution but in a really small package um vaccine storage we've heard a lot of um chatter um about the obviously covid and the vaccine storing protocol it seems that for some long-term storage we've heard it could be requiring a minus 80 storage and this they're gonna with vaccination you have a large distribution of small centers so this is a really good solution for a small um, so small footprint solution, but you can still store at minus 80. And obviously, um, academic research and biotech, where, where, where you're a small unit, you don't need a large unit, it's a great solution. So I'm just going to run you through a few features here of the unit from left to right. Um, the main door is, and, and the insulation is, is foam and uh, vacuum insulation, VIP. Um, this allows us to keep the unit very thin, but also have great hold over times in the event of a power failure, for example. Um, the handle uh, is metal, um, it's ergonomic, it's easy to use. A lot of people use plastic for handles um, and it can cause issues with um, you know, the plastic yielding under stress or if the unit's, um, the vacuum unit's too strong or if there's an issue with uh, frosting. Um, the, like all our freezers, there'll be a unique key lock there will be an, a padlock option if you need a padlock. Um, internally, you have the um, two inner doors. These prevent loss of cold air from compartments you aren't currently accessing. Um, on the main door, there's four layers of gaskets. This helps prevent a, uh, the entry of, of uh, warm air, which can also have humidity in it, and that can cause frosting. So it helps to really keep that to a minimum. Um, the IoT module you can see, I don't want to, I'm not going to go too much into that. That's probably going to be its own webinar. So look forward to that one. Um, the main controller is LED. And from this, you can see voltage 
internal and ambient temperature. Like the other minus 80s, it's stored on the control board for 15 years. And there's a USB access port below to get the .csv to go through the information for traceability and for maintenance. There's also a full suite of alarms that you see on our other minus 80s, you know, compressor state, um, high low temperature, sensor failure, door open, etc. cetera. Uh, below that is a, um, a very useful instruction panel. So this will actually tell you to change all the settings on the freezer, some basic maintenance tips, and um, the do's and don'ts of using the freezer. Speaking of uh, maintenance that everyone should do, um, filters. So the filter grill is very easy to access. You can actually uh, remove it without any tools, clean it, and I would recommend as part of a good maintenance program to clean the filter at least two or three times a year, or if your hot condenser alarm's going off, it normally means the filter's blocked. The, the internal is all zinc plated um, steel. This prevents it from being overly reactive if you're putting the nasty stuff in there. Uh, the cast at the bottom, very strong casters, very easy to move the unit into place. Once it's in place, there are leveling feet at the bottom for securing it. A unique feature is these units are very easy to stack. Um, like our incubator, they have stacking feet in place, no tools required, you just put the unit on top, seal it in place manually, and it's very sturdy and very secure. A good sort of use case for this is, A, you can expand the amount of storage you have, and B, you now have two key secured compartments if you have different teams, or you want the extra layer of security of having an extra key, key lock, you now have two different freezers in one space, each with key coded locks. Here you can see the cool down, warm up and temperature uniformity curve. The pull down time is roughly 300 minutes to minus 80. We measure all our pull downs from a 25 degree ambient because we find that, you know, around the world internationally, it gives the best standard. Um, this is about five hours in, in there. The warm up curve here gives you the units warm up from minus 80 or with the zero degrees. Um, this is a 25 ambient and there's the temperature uniformity curve below which is the plus or minus four degrees uniformity I spoke about earlier. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. If there are any questions, um, please feel free to ask. And as I promised, this is the only PowerPoint of the presentation. Okay, so some questions that have come through uh, with regards to the underbench are um, how many vials, how many two mil vials can the unit store? So I believe it's 6,000 for the other bench. Um, there are spaces for four racks in the unit. And obviously we do the drawer style, the bin style, whichever style of racking you prefer, including custom, then for, you know, we, we can meet those requirements as well. Um, Scott, you've asked, is the uh, shelf fixed or adjustable? It is adjustable. You can move the shelf as required. Um, another question that's come in is how high, how tall is the unit? What's the dimensions? We've mentioned that it's an underbench, but obviously people are very keen to find out exactly how tall it is. Now, the standard bench height is roughly about 90 centimetres high. There's, there's a lot of variation between that and obviously you can get crossbars which recruit, decrease the amount of space underneath. So we went on the safe side and the unit is uh, 810 millimetres or 81 centimetres in height which means it should fit under pretty much any vent solution you have in place. As for the depth, it's about 660 millimeters deep and it's 770 millimeters wide. So it's really compact. It can fit under the vast majority of benches and desks. Thank you, Harry. Um, another uh, question that's come through is um, how many compressors does the, this particular freezer have? So the underbench is a single compressor model, Auto Cascade. It um, has a high efficiency cascade system. It's HC refrigerant, very quiet, and this gives great energy figures and also helps keep the uniformity as low as you know plus or minus four. So it's really, really um, a, a good piece of engineering, actually. Um, another quick question from uh, Scott is how much space around the freezer is required um, for air circulation? Harry, you need to unmute your mic. <laughs> I figured that one out, don't worry. Um, <laughs> uh, we normally recommend around 30 centimetres around the back, but you can go as well as 10 or 20. It completely depends on the temperature in the room and what best practice is. It's not always practical to do. Um, however, it, 
the if you follow best practice, it will give you the best energy results as well, um, because obviously you're reducing the amount of hot air being trapped behind the freezer. Yeah, Scott, I think we all know, you know, for an underbench, it's probably not practical to get 30 centimetres all the way around and, and you're never going to get that. Um, but a, a minimal space that we would be looking at is sort of five to seven centimetres. Yeah. Um, another question that's come through is what about delivery time? Uh, do you have an, a European hub and how large is this? So I'll answer that. Um, currently, we have roughly anywhere between half a million and seven hundred thousand pounds worth of stock in the uk um, we hold stock of most of our minus 80 models um, but we need to bear in mind we do have a lot of models in the range uh, so we do focus on the fast moving moving products but uh, currently i think we've got well over 100 minus 80 freezers in stock in the uk um, so that's the sort of level of stock that we have here in the UK. Um, I don't think we've got any more questions on the underbench right now. So just to sort of summarize on the minus 80s that we've shown you today, the ULT freezer range, um, you know, I think what's clear is that we've got a very large range of freezers. Just on the three segments of products that we've shown you today, there's uh, nine models in the J series. There's four sizes with eight different variations in the BP range, um, uh, two sizes and four variations in the twin call. So that sort of gives you an idea of the scope of minus 80s that we have within the range. And we believe that through the, the J series BP and twin call, we have products to meet all customers' requirements throughout all the different sectors that we deal with. So hospitals, universities are typically looking at the J series because it offers good energy consumption with um, great features at a very competitive price. Uh, biotech, pharma and biobanks are typically looking at the BP series uh, because they want that temperature stability and even lower energy figures. And then um, the twin call is giving you uh, belt and braces and uh, temperature uh, uniformity and security of your samples. So again, biobanks or anyone who has incredibly uh, valuable samples that they're storing. Now, one thing that we did want to touch on today is um, a little bit more information about the new factory that we've just moved into in Qingdao. Uh, we recently opened a new factory, which I was very fortunate to, to go to the opening of uh, earlier in the year. Um, and it's a 75,000 square meter facility. So to give you an idea, we built a purpose built um, biomedical factory in 2013, which was 23,000 square meters. And we are now moving into uh, a brand new facility that gives us 50,000 square meters of manufacturing capability and the ability to manufacture over 200,000 units per year. Uh, in terms of capacity for minus 80s, we can do uh, uh, anywhere between 60 and 120 minus 80s a day. So that's the sort of size and capability we have. But not only that, it is a real state of the art facility, which we are incredibly proud of. And there is um, an ability to have a virtual tour, which Pete will run through quickly uh, now. And I would encourage everyone to take some time to, to go and have a look for themselves because there's a lot more information about the rest of the range of products that we do. We've just touched on our ULT freezers today, which is you know, a small part of our catalog of products. So please do feel free to, to go and have a look at this virtual tour and you can, you can get a, an awful lot more information about the products and the development that's going on within our business at the moment. And there's some fantastic um, products that will be coming through to, to the UK market in the coming months. So Pete, if you want to run through that now, that'd be great. Thanks, Richard. Uh, appreciate uh, yours and Harry's time and everyone's time again today. So 
we, we try to keep this within the hour. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, if we haven't got to all your questions, we will get back to you, you know, through social media or we'll email you. So I'm gonna move through very quickly. Richard's touched on some of the key points of our new BIOT centre. Um, it's a, it's a cloud-based experience. So I'm gonna just go through now, just give you a quick overview of how to access this, but as Richard mentioned, you can get to see all our products and solutions. So I'm gonna run through that quickly now. So it's very simple. You just need to go into your web browser, of course, and choose the Higher Biomedical UK website, or you can choose the international website. Uh, and if you're in multi, and obviously it's in multiple languages as well. But for example, if we're in the UK website, you would you can choose the banner by clicking on simply our cloud center, very easy. And that'll take you through into our, into our you know, virtual, well, it's, it's our actual exhibition center, but this is a way for you to virtually see this. And what's important is that you've got music, it's very interactive. music off and you can see there that this is our new on our ground floor in our office building in, in Qingdao that opened a couple of months ago and it's we, we encourage you to do the virtual tour and obviously when COVID's um, done and dusted we can invite you over and you can actually come and see the exhibition hall uh, and we can show you through. Again Richard mentioned we're both there back in January it is an amazing um, center. I don't think there's anybody else in the world or any other manufacturer with such a facility that can showcase their products and solutions. So very easy to use. You can either arrow your way through the center or you can choose uh, the box, etc., and you can go through different things. What I want to point out is when you see the flashing dot, that gives you a bit more information and background that particular product. So obviously this is the entry hall. So I'm just going to show you quickly. Hiar Biomedical is the global leader in building the ecosystem of IoT-based biomedical technologies and is committed to providing safe, secure and convenient health services for everyone. So there you have it. Very simple. Move through. What, I wanted, what, what you find when you go to the virtual centre is the products that were talked about today by, on our videos and by Richard and Harry but you can find more information about our biobank sample management systems, our reagent networks, our, uh, different, our different patents, our, our blood networks, our smart vaccine, both mains and solar direct drive, our laboratory network solutions, sample networks, biosafety, minus 50 cryo freezers, ULT freezers, pharmacy freezers and, and refrigerators. So, Really, it's the hit, this type of virtual tour is to stimulate and get your, give you an understanding of our product and their usages. So it's a full IoT production line, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So as I mentioned, you can actually arrow your way through or choose where you want to be. So Richard mentioned the capacity of the factory. This particular screen now showcases the manufacturing lines each day by hour by day by week by month and that's also we found you know, very big and huge inside the actual factory so i'm going to do a quick click again so you get a bit of an idea of the numbers the big data center of iot based biomedical manufacturing facility at present the iot based manufacturing plant covers a total area of 25000 square meters with a total manufacturing capability coverage of 50,000 square meters over two floors and an annual production capacity of 200,000 units. So that gives you a general idea very briefly as I wanted to show you today uh, a bit about uh, the Higher Biomedical uh, BIOT Exhibition Center. It talks, when you go through it, you see what's important to us is the higher culture and that's through the high, high, complete higher group. So it's important to us that you see our culture of our company by making your way through the center. So that's very important to us. So we look forward to welcome you to the world's leading manufacturer of biomedical and complete cold chain solutions. Please take your time, have a walk through yourself, and then obviously you can come back to any of our teams across the world, and in particular today because it's a focus on the UK, 
come back to the team and with any questions after you review the website and the virtual center. Uh, I'm gonna hand back to Richard now to, to wrap things up. But again, at the end, I'm gonna put up on the screen some of our, how to contact the team here in China uh, and in the UK. And obviously you can do that through social media, email and contact the team. And I just like to say from a personal point of view, it's been a, 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 a privilege and a pleasure to spend uh, today with the team here in the UK and to everyone back in China, look forward to seeing you soon. So again, thank you. And I'm gonna hand back to Richard and again, appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you, Pete. Um, so listen, just to wrap up everyone, um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's taken the time to, to spend an hour with us this morning. Um, I hope it was helpful. I hope we gave a good overview of the uh, ULT freezers that we focus on in the UK. I should stress that we have focused on the products that we really sell and are popular in the UK market. There are other products in our portfolio which are really focused on the international market. Um, if you have any questions, then you know, please feel free to contact us either by phone or through social media or through our website. Um, if you know your territory salesperson, then contact them directly. They'll be happy to help you. And if you don't know your ter territory salesperson, then, you know, again, please contact us and we'll, we'll put you in touch with them. Um, I just, you know, also like to say that we really look forward to seeing you all hopefully in the near future now that lockdown seems to be easing. And, uh, you know, please stay safe and, and we'll see you soon. So thank you very much, everyone.